Welcome to Jesus and Jiu Jitsu Podcast, episode 057. This is Stephen Little, and I'm here with Isaac Tawafa, Josh Strasberger, JP Dunn. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Morning. What up, what up? Man, that morning jujitsu class this morning, I wouldn't know, <laughs> but Josh and Ike would. <laughs> yeah, we were there. We held it down. I was, about, I was like, yeah, how are we starting this? Are we in front of all these people? Don't make me. I don't, I'm not going to call them out. But. Yeah, you would have. <laughs> I was waiting on Isaac, too. I was just going to see where it was going. <laughs> yeah, let's just let this one play out for a minute. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it's Cora and I missed it this morning. So Cora is signed up for Jiu-Jitsu World League competition oh, on sweet. the 20th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Since she signed up for it, she's been waking up at 5.30 or 5.45 every morning on her own to work out. Oh. Yeah. And, um, or to do schoolwork. So that way, when she gets later in the evening, she has the time to go do two jujitsu classes and get her workout in. So she's been doing that on her own. So her and I were going to wake up this morning and come train. But yesterday I just had this killer migraine like all day long. It's still, still, I still got it. Well, I mean, obviously it's not a migraine because I'm here. Um, uh, maybe. And, uh, <laughs> remnants, but Cora was starting to get it yeah. yesterday. When this morning she was just out. So when I was leaving to head to come well, here to the y'all podcast, are the same person. So that's that true. Absolutely. Well, it's like, but it's like hitting everybody in the in the house, like, like huh. staggered. Like Aiden had it a couple of days ago, hmm. and now I have it. So we'll see what's happening. But are you prone to them? No. See me neither. But no. I, like I was saying, I had one like a month ago, and it it just took me out. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna go lay down for like ten minutes, and then I was. Gone. Isaac had to bring me medicine. Yeah, he yeah. was calling like, are, are "Y'all are alive? alive? Y'all are so sweet." I know. Y'all are so sweet. <laughs> All right. But uh, it was, you know, I was leaving this morning to come to the podcast. I was like poking my head in the girls' rooms to make sure everything, like they're good or whatever. And Cora's just like laying on the bed, just like still trashed. And I'm like, "You all right?" She's like, "I'm so sorry. I slept through my alarm." I'm like, "Girl." You need the rest. Sometimes you got to listen to that body. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be good. So. <laughs> I miss jujitsu as well this morning, but. It was a gut check, yeah. as usual. Mm-hmm. The morning classes are getting... Yeah, it's like, a big morning. Usually morning classes at gyms are... They're just there. Like, yeah. You can get some good rolls in, but they're more so for like for people to get... For most gyms, for just to get their just repetition in of, of like classes. Yeah. And look, the morning classes at Formigas are like legit gut checks now. I mean, yeah. good techniques being taught, but then it's like you're getting five, six hard rounds in. Yeah, Which we worked is, we worked the truck, <laughs> and then six six rounds, mm-hmm. six solid rounds. So, yeah, yeah, it was a good check. And I I'm did. going back tonight. Same, I'll be I'll be there tonight. Core's training tonight. I can't tell you the last time I did two in one day. So <laughs> time to time to eat, dog. <laughs> yeah, we gonna, get, we gonna eat. Get those calories, and you're <laughs> earning them today, bro. <laughs> You're earning them today. Yes, well, sir. we want to thank Jocko Fuel, our forever sponsor, um, at least up to this point. <laughs> <They've> been, <laughs> they still love us. We thank you, Jocko Fuel, uh, for always taking care of us. We love Jocko Go, cleanest energy drink in the game. We love your creatine. We love the milk protein powder that has those probiotics in them so that you can actually digest that protein and it's clean processed, full of all kinds of uh, probiotics and vitamins, um, sweetened with monk fruit, just like the rest of their products, which is an all natural, no sugar sweetener. And man, I mean, I could go on and on the joint warfare is incredible. The, they have an awesome, good vitamin D really everything you need to supplement what's lacking in your diet. You can get at jockofuel.com. If you use code JJJ10, it will save you 10%, and it will also help support our podcast and our ministry efforts here at Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu. You guys have been so good at utilizing that code, and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. To the people that are using the code, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Jocko Fuel and Origin USA for a... Uh, giving us a code and supporting us and uh, supporting our efforts here at Jesus and Jiu Jitsu. Cause that's the other side of the coin is you got to jump over to origin USA or origin main.com main, like the state and get you the best gear in the game. Jiu Jitsu gear, gi and no gi training gear or lifestyle clothing from jeans and cool tees. Like the one I'm wearing today mm-hmm. to everything else, dirt to shirt, 
Texas cotton, trucked up by American truckers all the way to Maine, weaved in old school looms by American hands and workers, dirt to shirt, truly supporting this great country, bringing manufacturing back to America, um, which is an incredible story. What origin? I mean, if you have, if you want to see industry in our country and industry come back to our country and jobs coming back to this country, you need to go get on YouTube and start searching some of the podcasts of Pete Roberts and Jocko talking about that and origin and how they started it and why they started it and what they're doing. It is a company and a cause to get behind because they are truly reviving uh, a dead industry and it's going to make a different country and world for our children and our grandchildren and so and even for us. So I absolutely could not be more proud to represent a company than I am Origin and Jocko Fuel. So we just say thank you and I love wearing your geese. I Every time I roll, I get compliments or people complaining about once you get a little sweat on there, they're hard to grip. I don't know what they do up there in Maine, but I like that one stripe advantage, <laughs> as Josh pointed out. You wear, yeah. listen, you wear an origin gi. You're not advancing a belt, but you wear an uh-huh. origin gi. You get it sweated up a little bit. It's, you it's get a little stripe. definitely a little like stripe. adding a stripe. A little stripe. A stripe to your game. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey, Ike, speaking of origin, you know what's coming to my house today? Oh, they're, they're showing up now. Oh, they're showing up. Nice. The, the Moab. Pants. You're running out of room in your closet, buddy. Moab pants. Yeah. Running out you of room in my closet. Room. You're gonna have to start. I'll store some in your closet. Yeah. <laughs> no one's talked about your new gi. I mean, you're you're rocking a new. I know you, you. You had it on must, this morning. Must be nice. And what did I say to you? Sweet. I said, oh, oh, look at that gi. <laughs> must be nice. Must Ike. be nice. I don't I, have one of those. I said, well, yeah, you don't have one of those. You don't have any room because you ha- already have like five of them. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> that's, what you think that's what he hit me with. He was you like, think five, how many? Oh, do you think five origin geese is a lot? Yeah, which is you not. don't want to talk to me, and you definitely don't want to talk to JP. I have it's nine or ten origin geese. Oh my! But JP gosh. has twenty plus. What about my I'm seven? My seven-year-old son has three origin geese. Yeah, my what about son. That? I, I need to get Zeke one. He mm. needs a new gi. He grew out of his. Well, we borrowed a Maeda gi from a friend at the school whose son trained before, and now he's like, it's getting small. On. <laughs> it's to, it works to his advantage right now though, because pe- it's hard be- for people to get his sleeves and whatnot. But is that to his advantage or is it to his disadvantage? No, he can still move, but they can't grab his sleeves. <laughs> so it's always to your advantage that people can't get grips on you. Yeah. No, I mean while he's coming up and young and learning, like get those good grips, so he le- really has to learn. How yeah, to break learn how to break them. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Imagine yeah. that. So you're just cheating. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Oh, man, I was so nice to you in training this morning. Were you? I should have been meaner. Were you? Yeah. yeah. Now. Hey, I'm just going to put this out here. We need a short, a Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu short on YouTube, Lucas. We'll film it um, of Ike and Josh, two-minute two minute round, nothing crazy. And he's got, I don't even know what the short YouTube limit is, but uh, Battle Royale to the death. Two to minutes. The de- <laughs> to the death. I Nah, it, it, I was nice to you. Today. We screw around so much when we're rolling. Did I hit hook you today? No, I thought you were trying to. <laughs> I wasn't That's, even I can, close. I promise you, if you did that short, everyone would be waiting for a hill hook. <laughs> oh, I would do it immediately. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be epic. We just we I'd have spent to spend probably about thirty combined seconds of that round. Uh, shanking, pretend shanking each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He cut my throat, pretending to cut my throat. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you pretended to cut my throat, and I look up, and Victoria's looking at us, yeah. and she's just laughing because you cut my throat, and I was like, bah, bah, bah. From and side, she looks like, over, kinda, and she's like, I love it though. I love Josh is the instigator of all the shanking, mm-hmm. but it keeps it keeps the jujitsu a little pure in your head, thinking right. about okay, what would I do if this was actually For self real? defense? Yeah, and I saw. That's why I like combat jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, I saw a clip of that this week, and it was a purple belt with three or four stripes, and the dude on top was a big boy, a big dude that knew what he was doing, um, throwing punches, and he was throwing good, solid punches, but he was also being nice. You could tell it was a training atmosphere. Like right. I mean, a ton of times he could have hit the head and he chose the shoulder or the right. the chest and yeah. kind of a thing. But, dude, this purple belt, three-stripe purple, ended up in the fetal position. Literally, in the fetal position, just holding himself, and they finally shut it off. And it was like, I like, I mean, 
It, it's it, something it, to think about. It changes. It just changes the way you think because it takes away that false sense of confidence. You know, there's this joking saying, but it's it's pretty realistic, I think. You know, in, in a fight, like, so they would say, like, in MMA, you know, a, a black belt eats a few punches, it becomes a brown belt. Yeah. If you keep eating more punches, it becomes a purple, then a blue, then a yeah. white. Like, if you're just eating punches, yeah, like your jujitsu goes away really and, yeah. quick. And just to... To everyone in the car that is driving right now or in the gym that's lifting weights or whatever you're doing running down the road that's getting angry at us, <laughs> your jiu jitsu is probably going to work pretty good against someone that's never trained anything. Well, and the thing is, if you're doing jiu jitsu, you can punch too. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the counter argument. And you've got to have that predetermined strategy like a full guard is going to be able to keep those strikes away whereas like a half guard's not right so yeah you gotta you gotta be able to you gotta be able to think of what parts of my game do i play that would never should never translate to a fight right yeah yeah and then should you keep playing those yeah. or do you are you just in jujitsu for the sport cool or which are you which yeah. is fine too and and i think you can find a balance in both of those which as long as you're mindful of it's it. what we try to do That's although it. we never put on gloves we should actually yeah, I, I know i don't i don't I'm like down. saying this but because I know, already know the repercussions, but we should do this amongst the four of us. Well, that one time I went up to uh, our brother Dylan Cooper's thing, um, his facility. Um, he had us put on gloves, and we were, I mean, they were kids, so I, we weren't, like, laying them out. But it was, like, their rite of passage to get through. So yeah. we were doing jujitsu, and then they had, like, we were – Tagging them. No glove know, grips, bit. right? No. <laughs> It'd be no. amazing. <laughs> no. But you can get chokes. You remember, you remember that one where they showed it was Connor, uh, this one UFC fight, Connor fighting, well, maybe it was Diaz, where he got the he got two grips on his gloves and he's on his back and he's throwing up kicks. Oh, I don't know if I saw I'm, that. I'm, I, I, I typically, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it was cool. I'll just leave it at that. It was, cool. they, they called him for it. He like. <laughs> Or they didn't call him for it. Maybe that was the issue. But he had some like deceptive glove grips, and he was throwing some. And he couldn't get away. <laughs> well, some sneaky yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was just saying, like, just be mindful of the perce- perception that you have about your jujitsu. Yeah, jujitsu is great. We yeah. all know. Like we talked about it. Like you should be training jujitsu. Is a great thing. Uh, it's just when you start throwing strikes into it, it completely changes it. And if you're, and especially if you're going against another like equal level like so if i have a purple belt and you have a purple belt and our jiu-jitsu is equal which is our jiu-jitsu is pretty equal so our jiu-jitsu is equal but if i'm striking and you're not you're screwed oh yeah you're yeah. you are or, screwed or like okay in this in this situation i think when y'all roll josh typically plays like a half or a deep half some kind of a bottom sometimes sometimes and you play top uh, I don't or do y'all go back and forth? We go back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you had someone that typically plays bottom and someone that typically plays top, and you're playing, I see that, what you're saying. You have to yeah. think of okay. Well, the top position for striking is going to have the advantage most likely. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to throw shots off your back. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And you have a good top player like JP, right. and then add in somebody his, with some good well, balance. Well, if you train to throw shots off your back, shots off your back is not hard. True. It's, That's yeah, true. It's actually of, not hard at all. Okay. Like, you actually have to do it. Yeah. Like, like if you know a how solid to strike, elbow from your back. a strike is a strike. Whether I'm standing on top or from my back, like you're, I mean, you're just throwing a strike. If someone's coming down tight, like you throw an elbow from the bottom yeah. as well. I mean, I've seen a handful of MMA fights get finished from strikes from the bottom. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kevin Holland knocked out. Um, oh, what's that guy's name? He's one of the very few UFC fighters, but. Um, like he actually finished, like knocked a dude out from, from the back the bottom. striking. Oh, from the back. From sure. the bottom. I'm sorry, from the bottom, like striking. Wow. Yeah. Not um, just those cheesy people. little ones where they're like. <laughs> no, he was like. Yeah. We teach in My, self defense, like a lot of up, like up kicking. Yeah, yeah, foot on the hip and kicking yeah. up, yeah. My f- which keeps you honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But again, it comes down to like to Steven's point, though. I understand what he's saying. Yeah, like, yeah. It's you're saying it's hard. Like if you're not aware of it, and or training it. You're probably not going to be able to execute. It. My right. my favorite is the old Hicks and Gracie, like just the it, to me it's the purest form of jujitsu when you see him doing like the Valley Tudo fights mm-hmm. and stuff, and he's I love that stuff. And there's other the Gracies that were championing the sport, but 
where they're striking, but you can tell their intent of the strikes. Yeah. They are trying to create damage, but they're only trying to open up their jujitsu game. Th that's what I was going to say from the top. So like a bottom player that's a good guard player, someone striking from the top, they, they will get some strikes. They'll have more momentum because they're coming down. But – you also open yourself up to sweeps. Like triangle. Yeah. yeah, triangle, sweeps, arm bars, all kind, or kick them forward like Formiga likes to do, like a butterfly hook, and then pulling the person past past yeah. them. So you're getting way up underneath them. Yeah. Hard to punch someone when they're going behind you. Yeah. You know, so it, it's, it, and that goes back to how many strikes have been landed. And so what's your belt? Or <laughs> like yeah. what JP's saying. <laughs> how many have you You eaten? get four or five like solid hits. Like someone hard. like yeah. JP that's actually done MMA. If he starts, if he gets. I just feel like it's gonna go down fast. I'm and I'm oh, like one hit away. From Josh has been at a few of my fights when I, I mean I was a crappy white belt and I went and I fought. Dudes Never that was were, a crappy white belt. No, I was at the beginning of MMA. Yeah, I, I didn't train any jujitsu really, and so um, a it's lot of my guys were that I fought were blues and purples. Yeah, actually, That's true. I, not a lot were purples. Couple, I think uh, one was purple, but anyways, there's a few blues and purples. Striking changed the game. You know, yeah. I remember one dude. That I fought, he he had actually submitted one of my other teammates, like put him to sleep in a triangle. And I remember it was in the third round, and I we just it was it was a good fight. And but I had wore him out with knees, like yeah. the amount of knees. That's why I don't understand why do people not throw knees to the body and legs when they're standing and they're clenched against a cage. That's all I was doing. I was literally, I was trying to break your femur. Like that's what I wanted to do. And so be, because I had thrown so many strikes to the dude's legs and body, it just had softened him up. And also standing, we're punching. Right. There's a, I'll show you the picture. It's, I used to be on one of my Facebook profile pictures, but it, I, it's the picture's taken right after I landed a head kick. Like his head's kind of going back, my legs. And uh, we end up scrambling on the ground, and he puts me in a triangle. And I remember, like, I'm in a triangle, and I'm thinking, bro, I can't, I can't go out like right, my buddy right, did too. Right. And so I started literally punching his body. Yeah. Like, so he has a triangle in. You have a free arm. And I am wearing that floating yeah. rib out. Yeah. And then I put my foot up around and like push it on his throat, and I just start like pushing, and I'm punching. And he releases. Yeah. See, Again, striking makes a huge difference. Because in again. regular jujitsu, man, dude, that guy had long legs. Yeah. It was locked in. I was going to yeah, sleep. Yeah, it was going to happen. All right. So I'm just like just beating, beating that rib. And, so yeah. like striking plus jujitsu. Oh, yeah. That's an old school photo. That's, that's an awesome right? picture. Yeah. Striking plus jujitsu beats just jujitsu. Just jujitsu, I think, will beat just striking if you can close the distance you know what i'm saying depends on how much of a striker they are if, if you can if, get them yeah, to the ground if you can close the distance you get grips you get so collar tie you get go back and look drag. all the early all those early ufcs yeah it was a great example yeah. of, if True. you can close the distance yeah for right. sure yeah just but it's, yeah so it's a matter of like when we got to do that um jp and i got to do up in boston at dedeco's gym the laborio uh, seminar mm -hmm. and it was kind of geared Which around. He just got his coral belt. Yeah, um, shout so, out Lavorio. So he's such a good dude. Yeah. Um, but besides the fact that he's an absolute legend in the sport, for I think Lavorio. If I'm, I don't want to misquote, but he was the first heavyweight uh, ADCC champ, and then he, I know he's cornered and done over sixty UFC camps. Um, and fights and like over or maybe that one's a hundred a hundred UFC f camps and fights and then like I think he's been involved in like Valle Tudo sixty times or just some it's 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 un unprecedented what he's done in the sport and but it was neat because in his seminar he started his seminar teaching everyone how to throw a jab a cross a hook and we're all throwing these with partners. And it's kind of like interesting. And then he starts showing how to block, close the distance, body lock, like the old school, yeah. what I'm talking about, yep. Hicks and Gracie style, That's... you know, and that was really cool. And I'm like, man, I would love to study, like, like actually train with him for a couple of weeks, working through this with gloves and like maybe, you know, mouthpieces and stuff. Yeah. This would be cool to really get down some live action Learning how to shoot in on because it's a different dude. You catch, you catch a shot yeah. in the teeth, and it's. <laughs> I, I've shared this before on the podcast, that's, but I, that's I totally showed different. up 
to jujitsu one time and, and my, one of my coaches, Richie had, uh, the Taekwondo guys headgear from the other side of the gym and, uh, gloves and stuff. And I was like, Oh, they left their stuff. He's like, Nope, that's for us. And then we <laughs> practiced, uh, jujitsu and takedowns and stuff while we were getting hit and kicked and need and it's stuff. different. Yeah. And I, I got the air knocked out of me the first time. Cause I just, again, I wasn't, I was just in grapple mode. So I went to close the distance on Richie and he just literally side kicked me right in the, in the solar plex. And I was, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? But so I'll amend what I said earlier. Cause I know there's some people who are like, no, nah, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. A striker. Like I didn't a grapplers, not always going to beat a, a pure striker. But if you can close the distance and you can, you know, like weather that flurry. Well, I would say a grappler no, could beat key, an yeah, untrained striker. Key, yes. But the key to what you said is if they can close the distance. And if they yeah. can close the distance. If they can't, the striker's going to knock you out. Yep. It's going to happen. Yes. Or, like, just, just wear you out there. to the point that you just can't do anything. Oh, yeah. So the likelihood, yeah, it's a good one. I don't know if, I don't know if you can see this on camera, Lucas, but here's the photo we were talking about. The, the likelihood of people, though, that, like, if you rant... Okay, so if you transpose this into, like, a real-life scenario, yes. which, again, none of us are going to be out at the bar, right? Yeah. But some I mean, people might find You might catch me. Like, you might catch me. <laughs> catch me I'll say slipping. just... Here's another cool... Sharing the gospel? Here's yeah. another cool... <clears throat> another cool kick. Yeah, I'm kind of being funny about you might catch me. But, but if you're out there at the... Okay, let's just say you're, yeah, in a public setting and you're in a scenario that would lead to a fight. You're not going to... I think that most people are untrained, number one. And yeah. number two, if they train, they're less likely to actually fight. Correct. Yep, factual. So here's what you're, I... You're probably going to avoid it at all costs. Here's and what I stand if they're on trained this. to fight, they're probably going to avoid it at all of costs. Of course. I you can kind of tell if someone's trained. Maybe it's yeah. the toughest yeah. human I, I know, and I'll say no loosely, but I've heard Jocko in person and on podcasts and other things and multiple times who, I mean... Jocko's what twenty year black belt, over twenty years. Yeah, I mean the dude is tough as nails, and I hear him. He's like, "What happens if someone's gonna kick me? I'm gonna turn and run. <laughs> what happens if someone wants to punch me? I'm gonna turn and run. Yeah. What happens if someone wants to grapple me? I'm gonna turn and run. If someone grabs me, now I'm playing jujitsu. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is what he promotes. He's like." Don't ever engage in a fight. Why would you engage in a fight? There's no there's no positive. There's no winning. Even if you win, turn and run. But if they grab you, you can't turn and run. Sure and that. now we're playing jujitsu. And yep. I think that is the best, absolute best advice I've ever heard on it. Coming from someone that has you know, been involved in war, which is the ultimate form of fighting, you know, at a high level a very high level. And so it's like when I listen to him say that it helps me process in my head, even though I already am geared that way, I feel like, like, I don't want to fight someone. The, no. more, you, the more you train, you're like, I don't want to fight anyone. No, no. no but you well, know. and there's so many factors like first, don't be somewhere by yourself. Yeah. Agreed. Um, if that happens, but like, well, let's say you're jujitsu and then you take mount on somebody. Well, that's when you're going to get a baseball bat to the back of your head or mm -hmm. kicked in the back of the head. They probably got friends. It's, it escalates to levels, like you said. The ideal situation is just a Re restaurant chair in the back of the right. head. Yeah. I, I did see a video of Matt. Is it uh, Matt Sarah? Is his name? Yeah, Matt Sarah. Yeah, the UFC fighter. Oh, yeah, it he's, was on the subway? No, it was like a in restaurant. A restaurant. Uh, it's like it looks like a cheesecake factory. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. he just like easily controls this yeah. guy. It's way out of control. Those are the scenarios I see most likely that I would use jujitsu in that's real life. Per so. There's one of Ryan Hall at like a pizza place. And he was yeah. like, I'm just going to sit right here to yep. the police I've come. seen someone take a guy's back and just held him for 10 minutes. This guy yeah. was going bananas on people. And that's yeah. where, too, you can kind of like, you can kind of, hey, I'll get this, you know, like, yeah. uh, let, let me control them. You know, yeah. you can kind of use your language to make yeah. sure that you're not going to get that baseball bat to the head. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. It, what you see in every one of those videos, they weren't just fixated on the person. They were controlling and they were looking around and they were like, hey, can you call somebody, you know, and they're, but they're. Situa situationally aware right yeah. and that's really important too and that's a different i think most of those scenarios are like with it's typically i don't think it's between the guy that's controlling the situation like our jujitsu guy in this example i don't think he was the one that's in the confrontation with the person it's more like this person's berating someone else right and they step in like sir you need to calm down yeah, right you See, know that's always how i imagine 
if I ever used jujitsu. Well, who's going to come that. after a two hundred and eighty pound Samoan? No. Well, yeah. that you know, being big and we, you know, this Someone too. Someone drunk or on drugs. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Or some guy that wants feels like he has something to prove. Yeah, you that become a, you become a target. Usually drunk or on drugs. <laughs> yeah, right. True. True. <laughs> yep. Factual. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which you uh, know too, those guys with those big egos, whether it's just ego fueling them or they're drunken on drugs or both a lot mm-hmm. of times they're going to come in with those big swings yep. yeah. so that's when you that's when you can shoot in mm-hmm. yeah that's true do you do you have do you have a good double leg in your game i would it's love not i would it. love to watch you double leg some dude in the i've streets. done it a few times some in, dude comes in swinging wide like that in training but man it's so for me takedown wise it's like the riskiest one for me like if you miss, they're sprawling on your back. If you miss, they're guillotining. If you have a head in the wrong position, they're going to guillotine you or sprawl on you, and then it's just. Oh. It's also like so. When I think of that, Dean Lister had that guy that attacked his him. Yeah, <laughs> you remember? Yeah, and he double legged him. The guy jumped off a moped. Yeah, he. You didn't hear the story? Uh uh-uh. uh This guy drives by and starts like saying explicit things to Dean's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, out of every human what walking, he's around. built like an ape on planet yeah, Earth. Like, just pick, look at him. Even if you don't know he trains, you're just like, you there's pick, something wrong with you that You pick guy. the boogeyman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yes, know? Right. And so Dean yells something back, like, shut your mouth. I'm sure it was more explicit than that. But I think, I believe, it was like, you know, I believe the way the story goes, he yelled back, mm-hmm. like, you know, shut your mouth, have some respect, something. Defending his girlfriend, which mm-hmm. is appropriate. So the guy rides by well the guy circles back around rides his moped at dean and jumps off to fight him and dean double legs him and when he comes down and he dean broke his own hand on the concrete Uh, concrete now he said the uh, the other guy took considerably (laughs) amount more damage (laughs) like even with dean's broken hand Mm -hmm. he finished the situation in a fun way i think but but he walked away from it with a shattered hand. Yeah. And that kind of proves what you're saying, that the yeah. double leg on the street. I'd rather just, like, grab someone's head and snap them down and, like, you know, to the ground. You could Nose off the concrete kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, people are not very aware, especially if they don't grapple. Yeah. They don't know what to do. When they feel pressure this way, they pull back, you know. You yeah. just snap them down or just arm drag them and body lock them and put them on the ground. But it's funny because uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about self-defense, jujitsu, and about how... You quickly get into sport jiu-jitsu once you start jiu-jitsu. Um, mm-hmm. oh, but most of the basic techniques you learn are really good for self-defense. Yeah. The thing is, I think, because if people are like, there's arguments out there, and, and there will be people that listen to this that are like, no, you absolutely need to be training self-defense all the time in addition to sport jiu-jitsu. But I would argue that a lot of the super basic techniques we do all the time that are the fundamental building blocks of jiu-jitsu are like great for self-defense yeah. like just full, yeah. super yeah full guard <clears throat> yeah okay so here's my question for someone that has had a handful of legitimate mma fights had been in a lot of different combat and fighting type situations jp you have the unruly drunk guy maybe he's a little bigger than you or at least your size he's coming at you like just you're walking down the street and he's just decides you're his target first question what are you doing to handle that situation if he, he comes in swinging just straight up second question what are you doing if you don't have it your background of kicks and strikes and you're only a grappler jujitsu guy how are you handling it? so i'm going to hear scenario a and then scenario b is this what i used to do or what i would do <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe both not well now i'm like like you were saying like i'm just getting out of there yeah like i'm literally there's nothing holding let's say that let's say that for whatever the reason is you feel and i could drum up that scenario but let's say that you feel you have to fight this guy maybe yeah, there's other people your wife with and kids you. yeah. your wife and daughters are with you and you can't, you can't so run. i've tried to leave with my wife and kids you can't he's following us and yeah. i know that now as we go to the parking garage he's following us in the parking garage and maybe and he's I got a few my family maybe he's safely. got buddies or there's just a scenario where you or he absolutely you straight up just yeah you have to engage this guy taxi. i'm pulling out my gun and shooting him in the face correct okay yeah. Okay. Because he's followed me. You just multiple yeah, came times. out of an area where you're not allowed to carry a gun. Well, I'm I don't go to carry a gun anywhere. Sure, I know you so. are, but and you're not a don't go those you're places. not a deputy sheriff. <laughs> Pretend you're not you're a deputy normal sheriff. Normal listener of the podcast. We don't that go those places. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. what would you what do you do back in the day before you were a deputy <laughs> sheriff? Same. I still carry. Same. <laughs> 
Play along. Sort it out later. This is, <laughs> I know, I this is Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu podcast, not not Guns and Jesus podcast. <laughs> Although I think a lot of Jiu-Jitsu guys are yeah. the caring um, type. Just we should like we train are. that too. We will. We'll do yeah, more okay, of that so in a bit. Let's if, pretend you, for whatever reason, you're like, you know what? I don't want to splat this guy's head in front of my daughters today. You yeah, have that sure. thought. No, I, I've yeah. definitely had that thought where I was like, oh, yeah, no, I don't want to do but that. But I will say, though, just real quick, for the average person, I mean, you've got to weigh all the stuff out in your head because... All the time. Dude, you, you get cracked. I mean, you... Yeah. I mean, but here's you, the deal. Like, you... Like, like these are things... Like, that's why I said I'm like, I'm going to try to leave. I'm going to try to leave. Like, and then what? My wife and kids, like, they... If I'm like, hey man, to get get the kids in the car and leave, she's gonna leave with the kids, and I'm gonna stay there to create that distance to get them out of there. To get them out of there, um, yeah. And I mean, I'm being serious, but also what you said is something I calculate all the time. I don't want to shoot somebody in front of my kids, no, and wife. Like I don't this, want. I don't. Well, want that at really, the same time, you don't want to. You, oh, sorry. You want to beat somebody down in front of them either. But no. what if they catch that lucky shot? And then all of a exactly. sudden, eight yeah. dudes, eight dudes pile in, yeah. and now yeah. they don't have a dad because dad's in coma. So yeah. th- if you do engage them physically, so there's always there's always a risk both ways. So every I, puncher has a chance. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. disagree with your pull out my weapon. Yep. It, yeah, at all. Yeah, I mean, and and that's the thing is like, um, I mean, I've seen guys that like I, I've seen buddies in the SEAL teams that I knew they were like really good stand up fighters. And the other guy just had the puncher's chance, yeah, and freaking knocked my buddy out cold, yeah, like out cold. And you're like, oh, like you're talking a high level striker getting knocked out cold. So that's what it's like. Hey, create distance, create distance, create distance, create distance. Get like get get out of there, like you know. And it se- it seems stupid, but like, man, I might like cause a scene, like so that like people are noticing like right. you know, other people somebody can call the cops or whatever really because smart, you know if you create a huge scene now you know and then it's obvious that you've been trying to get away trying to get away because here's the deal like i i mean dude you shoot somebody depending on where you live like right. you're probably going to jail now until they sort it out yep yeah. until they sort it out depending on where you live and and it's just it's crazy it's crazy so i am avoiding it at all costs um you know i had this happen to me not too long ago i, I like had some dude get out of his car at a red light and was like pounding on like like just get all anger i'm like what is going on right now we had but that dude like, that was uh getting all ramped up when we had our families in our cars, he didn't know I was in my truck oh, parked yeah. next to him. This, yeah, same this thing. dude started acting crazy. <laughs> Josh, JP's Josh's dream. JP stops <laughs> his know. car in front of him, and this dude's just going nuts. And I'm just waiting. Can yeah, because I was trying to park, and then I was like backing up, and the guy like acts like he's gonna t-bone my car where like the girls are sitting, and I'm like. And I just like stopped the car and I'm like looking and he's like, like flipping me off and yelling, telling me to get out of the car. I'm just like looking at him, man. I was like, please don't. And I'm like, I'm not going to. The last thing you want, bro, is me but, to get I, out like, of the I'm car not... and the Strasburger standing behind you. <laughs> yeah, you don't I, even but, know. I'm, but I'm not going to get out of the car, but I'm like looking at like, what is, what is this guy's problem? Well, and, and Josh he... gets out of the truck slowly, opens his tailgate, pulls out a baseball bat <laughs> wrapped in barbed wire. He's like, <laughs> I've been waiting. Well, I know he does have a tomahawk in his in his truck i think at he all has times. two okay yeah right two <laughs> you don't no i, I, I have i have two in my truck if yeah, you want to do a truck check i need one one's, well, what was one's for, for wood chopping and one's for chopping other things what right i'm just saying it's I'm, we can what go. was funny was i was just seeing what he would do because i'm watching all of it my when windows are tinted this guy doesn't know i'm over here and yeah. he's literally or with him berserk yeah. Yeah. in the car yeah and then JP drives off. Before I left, I rolled my window down and looked at him, and he was like, <laughs> and then he like realized, "You could tell he was like." Oh, he just realized I could have had a real team. problem there, dude. If you think because I rolled it down and I was just like, "This exact scenario is is what we're talking about," for, <laughs> yes. but from the other side, correct? You yep. literally that could be what you're walking into. So you're getting ticked off in the so, parking lot over a parking space or something, yeah. And you're going you're going crazy. You don't know that his buddies in the truck two or two, two parking so, spots and been waiting for you to mess I'm up. I'm gonna create this. <laughs> Cowabunga so, it is. <laughs> walking down a downtown street. Maybe your daughters wanted to they pick a special restaurant that's downtown for their birthday dinner. Okay. You're walking with the family. For whatever reason, you don't have your weapon or you okay. choose not to use it. Okay. And these guys, I mean, it's just fast and furious. <laughs> you can tell they're drunk. They're coming in swinging hard. And you have to, like, there's no opportunity to create a scene. You don't have anywhere to create a lot of space. It's like engage or get hit kind of a thing. What do you do? 
I'm striking. How? Push kick as hard as I can. Like a front kick? Yep, front kick, push kick, um, st- straight to the solar plex. I'm going to kick him um, where the legs join because I know we have kids that join, listen to us. I'm kicking them. In, uh, yeah, I'm kicking them in the groin as hard as I can, like as hard as I to can. Dismantle stuff. Yes. Yes. Um, and then if they're close enough for striking, uh, elbows so I don't break my hands. Elbows. Because that way I can, I can, I can manipulate, you know, move stuff around. I can like my kids, like whatever. Like I can still use my hands. I'm not. Right. Yeah. And, and you're on I'm, your feet where you can. Keep your daughters back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I would. It would be push kicks, knees, elbows, um, and then punches would be like the very last thing because I don't want to break my hands. Because then if I've got to get out of there, I'm not. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to drive with broken hands. Yeah. So. Okay. So now exact same scenario, but you have no striking experience, and you're just the average dude that trains jujitsu, and you got good. Like your you have your jujitsu. You have your purple belt JP jiu-jitsu you've just never sh- sh- had any striking training and you've never had mma fights you've never been in fights where you have st- struck your so you're like oh you're the weekend warrior grappler and that same scenario happens what are you doing get in a time machine go back and train <laughs> striking. slap myself around a little bit nope. <laughs> yeah stop skirting no. the question yes. uh, slap myself for being a loser that doesn't know how to throw hands <laughs> And um, we just lost viewership by 50%. <laughs> no. Or they yeah. realize that they're lacking something in their life. Um, no, I I don't know. Like, uh, I guess. You're going to, I mean, you're going to utilize the tools you have. Yeah. Um, Learn some foot sweeps, man. You can do so much. Especially if the guy's drunk. Knock him to the ground and then get out of yeah, there. Yeah, I would. You know? pro- yeah, I would. I've always pictured the. My thoughts always been. I have no idea. Honestly. Like, like this kind of a deal. I would want to be in yeah, that. Yeah, scenario. on the side. Yep. On the, I heard one guy. He called it like he calls it the rhino. It's called the rhino. Yeah, yeah. I told you that. Yeah. I think. Okay. Or Maybe you probably heard it from somebody else, but yeah. I heard but it. literally, I actually putting your hand up and putting that elbow inside to shoot in when on the side they're punching. Yeah. And then go in for the body lock. That's exactly what. So that's the first thing I ever learned in jujitsu because it was learning self defense jujitsu from this guy in Hawaii, and it was this. It was blocking. To close the distance, so like getting closer to him, and, and then using this arm to fold under or around the body for a body block. and knowing that you're yeah. still probably gonna take, you might take oh, some yeah. damage. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's it's hard not, for them to knock you out when you're covering yeah. up your body, your face like that. And the closer you get, the I think it also yeah. de- depends if they're swinging yeah. wide like that. Like if they don't, if they're not trained, I you, I feel comfortable just boom. But if you can tell they know what they're doing, that's a different. That's also a different. Yeah, scenario. I mean, I would probably if they're swinging wide, I'd dip under and go for a head and arm. And then if if not, then like if I'm getting close enough to where their hands are on me, my hands are on them, like Isaac would say, probably a foot sweep uh, or just some like just sloppy takedown, try to get to their back, choke them out, mm. choke them out till they're unconscious, hold it there for an extra five to seven seconds and then leave. Yeah. You know? Get up and go. Yeah. And they're fine. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be okay. Because if you do that, then you literally choke them out. You can like lay their head down on the concrete yeah, and yeah. then just walk they're away. Taking a peaceful pull, their, pull their shirt off. Pull their shirt off where it's half over their head, so they they stumble. Like Mighty they, Duck you know what I'm style. Saying? It gives yeah. you some time to get to your car. Tie it. Yeah. Tie it up. <laughs> Stick Dick. your belt off. Top. Shirt. Tie <laughs> their hands their Take back. their wallet. No. No. <laughs> oh, just kidding. I mean to take <laughs> a photo of Give their them. ID in case yeah. you have to report it. Give to the them police. a wedgie. You know, yeah, yeah. give them a wedgie, take their socks off. Yeah. Hey, bro, yeah. well, I'll, I'll tell you straight up. <laughs> I don't know if I can tell. <laughs> Who took my socks? Or t- yeah, you, can, you can tie their shoelaces together. I don't think I can tell that story on air. Then well, probably I can not, probably t- I can probably I just can't tell. Well, the if full you're saying finish. I can't, then you probably should. No, here we go. So <laughs> oh. in high school, in. the football team, we played an off season. We would do quick pen. If you. I don't know. We didn't have a. I didn't. We didn't have a wrestling team in my right, school. Right. Right. Yeah. But we would. Do, did you do quick pin? Yeah. With either with the socks or just like you only have like thirty seconds. So the way turn. we do it, we just go to the football field and the whole team would make a giant circle, mm-hmm. and then two guys. The coach would just call two guys, and you'd go mm-hmm. hands and knees, like head on shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Like head yep. on shoulder. Yeah. That makes it like ear to ear. Yeah. Ear to ear, and he blow the whistle, and the only there was the only rules were no striking and whoever shoulders are on the flat on the ground loses. Yes. Yeah. And so I was going against one of the, our big, uh, linemen and he made the mistake of wearing traditional boxers. And when, you know, so you're, you're facing each other, but 
you know, head, forehead to shoulder, forehead to shoulder, ear to ear. So you're looking down their back Mm -hmm. and I see his boxers just chilling on his Mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And so they blow the whistle and I just swim over, boom, full hand grip on the boxers. Straight up sumo grip. Pulled him as hard as I could to where he went flat, face on the ground, like nose in the dirt, boom, just start dragging him. Everyone's laughing and yelling and cheering and coaches are cracking up. And I just flip him over and pin him backwards. But... (laughs) That's awesome. <laughs> There's follow up to that story, but yeah, it was it was basically the greatest wedgie of my life. <laughs> it was epic. It won the match. A wedgie yeah. won the match. We're done. That's good. I was also, for whatever it's worth, I mean, it's not a huge brag, but I was undefeated in my full quick pin career. If you ever have a BJJ fanatics, you can teach the the wedgie, the atomic wedgie, that, yeah, atomic wedgie sprawl, Bro, wedgie, wedgie sprawl. Hey, I want to tell you the look on this dude's face when he had a crack full of boxers. Oh, dude, it's horrible, and those are unforgiving. Yeah, there's yeah. gonna be some. Yeah, it's not like it's not like today's some fabric kind of, burn there. Yeah. Compression shorts, so like yep. you know, I used to wear like Under Armour compression shorts then, and that's when Under Armour only did compression gear. Right, mm-hmm. they didn't have any lifestyle clothing. It yeah. was like sports gear only. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was used to wear that style stuff then in athletics, but a lot of you didn't wear them every day because now they have like the more lifestyle stuff, mm-hmm. which Origin has some yeah, too. Yeah, it's just for football the, back in the day. Right. Yeah. And so I was, I would always, I would never got caught not yeah. wearing those. I'm like, bro, you're wearing old school boxers. You're about nah, to pay, man. dude. That's yeah. what you get for wearing boxers in an actual athletic yeah. setting. Because like I'm thinking of the lines like in the, um, train, you know, like train to fight and what you're normally going to wear. Like the Under Armour, the Under Armour, like, kind of athletic lifestyle like boxer briefs things that same thing that origin makes and produces mm-hmm. they don't have a seam up the butt the seam comes like around the outside yeah, it's the, out the sides out to the sides yeah. so you couldn't get wedgied like in the in like the ones i'm oh, wearing the right whole now seat of the pants would slide yes up. Yeah. you don't you wouldn't get wedgied i mean it would be uncomfortable on your legs but it's not coming it's yeah. not going in, in between the cheeks mm-hmm. Wedgie jitsu, folks. You heard it here first. I'm gonna tell you that would make me angry. I can tell you that if Isaac, if me and Isaac were rolling and he, I'm gonna do it. He now. wedgie blasted me. I'm gonna. I wouldn't wedgie you to like the point where your underwear rips or whatever. But I would definitely. I would wedgie probably you just, just to irritate you. I would you. probably go insane. <laughs> okay, insane. <laughs> YouTube short. I love that it's gonna make you so angry, dude. He's talking about oh, it like he's already so done excited. it. Excited. He's so excited because I want to see him just erupt. I will lose my mind. You know what? You're actually yeah. That now this picture makes a lot more sense. This is the picture that I sent to Josh. I'll show the people, but this is so. You here's the normal uh, cowabunga, the cowabunga face, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah. Here's, Safe. here's like the the, here's the the when he gets insane wedgied. Insane version. <laughs> <laughs> look at that pizza. Look, but look at the traps too. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a serious one. I don't know if you guys can see this. But <laughs> that would heinous. be my face if you did that to me, and then yeah. it would. I don't know what would happen next. with the pizza coming out of the teeth. I love it. It's terrible. We would be a podcast oh, of three. I needed that. Yeah. Ike would die. Ike would have to die. Yeah. Hey, it would be worth it. <laughs> um, Why is Josh going to his truck mid round? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a tomahawk! <laughs> Lock the door. Uh, well, before we get into the word, I want—I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this episode. Obviously, Chris Iverson. Uh, he is a friend of the ministry. Uh, he has sponsored a few episodes, but this one he wanted to sponsor in honor of Formiga's father-in-law who passed away, Elisa's dad. What a classy move. Yeah. Yes, Reynaldo Ambrosio. So he wanted to make sure, just in honor of him, in memory of him, um, to dedicate the episode to him So, uh, or to their family. And so I think that's awesome. Chris, thank you so much for supporting the ministry. You've been a huge supporter, and you've enabled us to uh, record a, a few episodes now, which has really blessed the ministry and enabled us to spread the, the message, spread the gospel uh, around the world. So thank you. I also want to give a shout-out to... Emily, I don't know how to say her last name. Um, you guys have probably interacted with, with her as well. Um, she's a supporter of the of the ministry. What's her last name? Ken Kenon. Oh Kenon? yeah, yeah. Kenon or Kenon, something. Kenon. You're gonna have to tell me, Emily, how to say that. Um, but she and her daughter Giovanna, who also listens to the podcast, hi Giovanna, um, own a candle shop and they uh, a little candle business. 
They send candles all over the place. They sent one to my house. It smells amazing. I'm supposed to bring it so you guys can smell it. Must We're gonna, be nice. Yeah, I know. I'm bringing it next week um, for the podcast, so yeah. you guys will get to see it then. But I just wanted to say thank you for sending that and being huge supporters of the podcast. They are. They got some Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu gear, and uh, they're in the game. They train and all Big. that. That's real. For um, Elisa's uh, father that just yeah. passed, so uh, our professor – um, JP, Josh, and my professor, and Ike's kind of the co-professor. Friend. Yeah, yeah, friends. But he's like your jujitsu great grandpa because yeah, your true. professor is in Formiga's lineage. True, and you cross train there consistently. Yes. Yep. Um, Formiga. Um, so his father-in-law just passed recently, and I know Formiga's wife, Elisa. Her and I've had at least four or five conversations about her dad. Yeah. She just adored her daddy. As she called yep. him. She adored him. Um, it was living in Brazil still. And uh, I think, I believe Elisa lost her mother when she was younger. And um, mm. so she's just been super close with her dad and she just thought the world of him. And I know he was an amazing man and um, amazing man of God. And so, yeah, that was really cool, Chris, to honor him yeah. and um, and the Formiga family, you know, yeah. Elisa, I know that means a lot to them. Yeah. So, yeah. and I know that if anyone saw his post, um, they got the news while Formiga was at a tournament and they were trying to leave and Elisa told him to like stay and win for her daddy. And yeah, we he, talked about that. Yeah, he yeah. took double gold. That's so rad. cool. So cool that he did it. And um, so anyways, thank you, Chris. Yep. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, um, Emily and Giovanna. Sweet. So who's got the scripture today? I've got two options. Let's go. Ooh. So, ooh, a little one-two to fit the theme, a little yeah. jab hook to well, fit the theme of today's episode. Jab cross. I don't know. Let's yeah. see. Um, or that Tyson uppercut since we got the Tyson Paul thing coming up. <laughs> <Ridiculous. laughs> he is he is in a world of hurt. So frightening. So we have at his age. Yeah. We've oh. talked around okay, and focus. similar. Like I know what Isaac I'm was saying. Like Let's talk Tyson. Proverbs thirteen twenty <laughs> sounds very familiar. Proverbs thirteen twenty is walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. I, f- I, it's such a good verse, and uh, to me, that's pretty self-explanatory. But I was like, just like flipping through this Bible, and I was, I found out, uh, I found this little, it has like, I don't know what you call them, like, well, not like an outtake or something, but it had this like little side thing that said spiritual adultery, and I'd never, I don't remember hearing anybody ever say that, or I guess it I doesn't. Don't, I don't think I've ever heard that. Yeah, term. and it, like so, it caught. I was like, spiritual adultery. I'm like, that's unique. <clears throat> And it it says in here, um, one of the Bible's reoccurring themes is that God looks at the hearts of men and women just as much as he looks at their actions. And we see time and time again in Scripture that God finds plenty uh, to look at in our hearts. People harbor hidden wishes of a rebellion against God. Sure, they know that God is God and that they should obey him. But at the same time, they feel deep inside their life might be might really be better if God were put out of the picture and they could live as they please. The prophet Isaiah made this made an insightful observation about the heart in this passage, condemning the people of Israel for their worship of other gods. He compared their idolatry to prostitution. You have committed adultery on every high mountain, he wrote, speaking the words God gave him. There you have worshipped idols and have been unfaithful to me. You have left me and climbed into bed with these um, detestable gods. Long after Isaiah's time, Jesus spoke about the heart as the place where sinful actions, um, I'm sorry, where sinful actions are born and grow. Anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in uh, with her in his heart, Matthew five twenty eight. Idolatry is like script uh, is like spiritual lust, and both lust and idolatry are attitudes that begin in the heart. Over time, the heart begins to act out for these forbidden desires. Uh, when when that happens, adultery is the result. Adultery can be sexual or spiritual. In either case, a problem begins long before the actual act is ever carried out. If you want to guard your heart and keep your actions pure, begin by guarding your heart. I'm sorry. If you want to guard your life and keep your actions pure, begin by guarding your heart. Even though it may not seem evident today, um, the uh, unexamined desires that lurk in the heart will be uh, the cause of many actions you take tomorrow. So 
that was out of uh, Isaiah 57, 7 through 8. Like that was the verse, the root verse of it, uh, which is, I mean, they said in there, but I'll read it again. So Isaiah 57, 7 and 8, you have committed adultery on every high mountain. There you have worshiped idols and been unfaithful to me. You have put pagan symbols on your doorsteps and behind your doors. You have left me and climbed into bed with these detestable gods. You have committed yourselves to them. You love to look at their naked bodies. The mm-hmm. part that I liked about the little extra section, I don't even know what you call this. Mm-hmm. Commentary? Like almost? Commentary, yeah. yeah. Is it? Yeah, I guess so. Whatever. It does, yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, in the Bible was... Oh, da, 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 da. In either case, the problem begins long before the actual act is ever carried out. If you want to guard your life and keep your actions pure... Begin by guarding your heart. So, figure that would be a good one for us to. That's great. I think uh, while I was while you were reading that, it, it brought to mind what a lot of people's objection to Christianity. We don't have to all go down this path, but this made me think of this. I listened to a lot of debates between um, you know Christians and Christian apologists and atheists, and <clears throat> I think what happens a lot of times is that people are uh, one of the biggest objections to. God or the existence of God is them not wanting there be to be a God because of their sin. Mm. I want to continue. If there is a God, yeah. I have to be conf- I'm confronted with that and yep. I'm going to have to change some stuff. You got to reconcile that. Yeah. Because no, I'm no longer going to be the God of my own universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people don't want it to be so. Uh, wh- what you were reading that Isaiah 57 makes me think of that. It's because of their own desire. Yeah. Um, uh, sinful desire, but yeah, that's that's a good passage. So again, I know I, I opened up with the Proverbs one. And that was just because when I opened my Bible earlier, we're like, "Hey, does anybody have a verse?" And literally, my Bible opened up to it and it's highlighted. I was like, oh, "Walk with the wise, become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble." Like that's mm-hmm. a really good thing just to think about. Like you should be mindful of who you hang out with. You should mm-hmm. be mindful of the people you spend your time with. Like these are things that we should be aware of. You'll Very be, aware. You will become those in people. All, in all aspects of life. Yeah. You hang out with healthy people, you'll probably get healthy. Um, I mean, like Ryan Vong, who's on my podcast, like they were all hanging around. Uh, he shared this story. Like that's how he got in, into jujitsu. Him and his the core group of guys, their buddies, like Nick, David, Nguyen, and a few other guys, they would literally just sit around and play poker and drink on the weekends all the time. And, they, he's, and he, he's like, dude, we're all getting like fat and out of shape. And he's like, so he started doing jujitsu. And he got his brother into it. And then Nick and Dave and all these. And so now all these guys, like, they lost a lot of weight. They're right. in really good shape. They have a really good lifestyle. It, you know, it's be mindful of the people that you hang around with. And, you know, as we're trying to improve our walk and our relationship with God, we have to really be careful of who we walk with. And I feel like it ties into this verse as well because, and, and this is why I say that is, In either case, the problem begins long before the actual act is ever carried out. If you want to guard your life and keep your actions pure, begin by guarding your heart. Well, be careful who you're hanging out with. Like you hang out with the wrong people long enough, like there it's it's that complacency that creeps in. It's going to affect your heart. Yeah. And and on the flip side or I should say impact your heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Impact your heart. And on the flip side, if you're hanging around the right people, when those Mm -hmm. things come up, they're going to call you on your crap you know like yeah absolutely i mean the good your good friends are gonna love you enough to be like hey man what are you doing yep yeah we have Um, that at this table yeah Yeah. for sure i i had something kind of jumped out on in the isaiah passage jp can you read the part like just before the pagan symbols i'm gonna take a second to track it you have committed adultery on every high mountain there you have worshipped idols and have been unfaithful to me. You have put pagan symbols on your door uh, post and behind your doors. You have left me and climbed into bed with these dis- detestable gods. You have committed yourselves to them. You love to look at their naked bodies. So I have I have three three thoughts on that, and hopefully I can keep these organized in my brain as I talk. But the th- kind of three things jumped out at me. We've talked. I think y'all have heard me just beat this drum if you are a regular listener. But I think two with idols as we know that's going to be stuff that we don't even realize is an is an idol so to speak it's just anything that we're putting above god so could be jujitsu for a lot of guys it is jujitsu in this community could be our job 
where we find our worth, could be um, a sin that we like, that we hold above the Lord, you know, so it's just, that's something to really be introspective on, is just be cautious that these idols and putting things and worshiping things, here's, I heard this said the other day in such a clean way, and it made so much sense to me, but it's like, we were created to worship. That's why, that's why we have celebrities. That's why people go bananas over these arguments like Michael Jordan or LeBron James, who's the better basketball player? Right now, there is an aspect of, I think there's some people that are really love the game and the talent and stuff, but the reason people obsess over stuff is we were created to worship, yeah. and you will worship it's something. True. Correct. Yeah. You will worship something. Yep. You idolize something in your mind. Something gets the majority of your attention, your focus, your thought life, your passion, and you have to be careful to not put those things to not put those things above the Lord. And so when JP reads that, that's the first thing I always thought about because yeah. I'm more concerned where I'm at in my life of the, the sneaky thing, right? Yeah. The thing that I'm not aware of it's because it's not on the front of my mind, but it's that thing. What am I put not on purpose necessarily, but what am I putting all my focus and attention? What am I worshiping right now? Not meaning to, and I don't mean raising my hands and singing, right? right? Like at church, but you're d- Giving all your time and attention and effort yes. and everything, which is worship, and yeah. which yes. is worship. Yeah. So that's it's not why like you're literally bowing down. Yeah, and correct. Like you said. So that's the first point uh, that I have is to be introspective on that because that is, and that's the first commandment, by the way. When, um, if I remember right, if you read in Exodus, it talks about do not put other gods before me. Mm-hmm. Then the second thought I have is we actually know, I mean, there's a few people, I know JP, you know, I talked about it, that literally go around wearing pagan symbols, like on necklaces and earrings, oh, yeah. you know, like they're symbols of other gods and and anti-Christ type symbols um, that they actually wear, whether they think it's trendy or they're proud of it. And it's like this, this dark thing that they're kind of proud of because they're edgy or whatever, yeah. um, or they're literally going, this is like the sun and moon God, and this is that, and I want to represent this, right? right? So we see that, and so that's a warning, man. That is an absolute warning. And then here's my follow up to that, is you have to understand that in the world we live in, it is, again, we've talked about this, it is more spiritual than physical. So as real as the physical is, the spiritual realm is more real because it's eternal. It's eternal. And we are distracted a lot of times by the physical. And we focus more on the physical than we do on the spiritual. It's an easy thing. I know I fall prey of that all the time. That's something I'm constantly fighting um, to be more present in the spiritual than I am in the physical, or as present in the spiritual as I am in the physical. But with that, in this spiritual world we live in, signs and symbols have meanings. And so you have to be cautious about what you associate with, what you wear on clothing or jewelry or stickers or trinkets and things that you buy that you bring into your home. And all I'm saying is those things have associations, and that's a great scripture warning about pagan signs and different things. And so I don't want to go, this could be be an hour. We could spend an hour talking on this topic, and I don't think this podcast is the right time for that. But I'm just saying, be introspective. There's a lot of hidden things in culture. And, oh, yeah. you know, we've everywhere the enemy yeah. perverts. So, for example, a peace sign, while it quote unquote means peace, it's an upside down broken cross in the middle, right? So, some of y'all might not have an issue with that. But for me, I'm like, man, once that was kind of shown to me, I was like, mm, I don't really, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any. And I didn't have anything with peace signs on it, but my wife did. And this was back in the day when we were, this was like, 2010 when I first learned about all this actually from Matt Russell and Troy Foster yeah. the two founders from of pursuit and walking in truth ministries um, they taught me this and I was just like man I'm gonna go find it so like I, t- I told my wife and she went and found everything like had peace signs on it got rid of it like I don't I don't want to associate that whether you know there are I th- there are implications there are what's the word Josh like I- is implications there are there can be ramifications for holding some of these things, these things that have symbols that are pagan symbols. But even above and beyond that, even if you don't want to recognize that aspect, just the fact that you don't want to be representing yeah. something that's anti-Christ. That, that's what I was going to say a lot of your... So uh, I don't want people to be freaked out and they're not going to. This is just um, adding to what you're saying because it is important. Though 
you you're choosing what you want to represent you to other people and you should be purposeful about those things yeah, you should take inventory yeah but also god you know the intention of what like you know and i don't know if this is using this verse out of context it, it could be but like it's not what goes into a man that makes one clean but what comes out of him so it's like there are all kinds of like it's impossible to not encounter some kind of symbol that represents something or this used to mean this and now you know what i'm saying but um a lot of it has to do with what you're choosing to represent because God redeems all like he redeems lots of things. And so what you might have, you know, something might represent something to the world, but you know, the God you serve is more powerful than that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's important to, cause I think like, for example, a lot of, and I'm not trying to say if you have something with the peace sign on it, you're a horrible person at all. But for example, I made sure to be active. And once I learned kind of, oh, the peace sign actually has a deeper meaning. And it makes sense that the culture and stuff wants to push that as a trendy thing, especially like 15 years ago is real trendy, you know, and um, kind of coming back from the 70s. But it's like, okay, you know what, from now on, I'm going to make sure that my daughter, we don't buy my daughter anything yes. with the peace sign. And yep. maybe your daughter already has something. I'm not saying that's horrible that's Go for burn you. it that's for you to ask the lord about i mean i did i took all that stuff and i burned it because i'm just like i don't stand for any of this but that doesn't mean that that means to be your conviction but maybe it's something that you want to go oh i want to educate myself on what some of these things are that are popular in culture and i want to make sure i'm not buying those or kind of bringing those into my family's life going forward it's just a thought when jp read that thing about pagan symbols i'm like dude there's if you start studying it pagan symbols are actually all throughout our culture oh, yeah. and a lot of times it happens to be tied in with fashion and trends and so it's like because it's disguised because the enemy likes to pervert so just a good dude. good warning for people out there those are those were my three thoughts when you were reading jp and they were kind of cool kind of yeah, random i love it i love them josh isaac anything to add pull that thread josh pull it hard um i, I think i i mean i do agree I, I was trying to. I was looking for a, a scripture about. I, I can't think of it, but something about representation. Like as a believer, you do have a a, a duty in how you present yourself mm -hmm. and represent. So I think there is a level of that. But I, I agree with what both of you guys have been saying. I think. I, I think it's real easy to. Um let things slide and i i would also agree like it 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 shouldn't give you any kind of spirit of fear or anything yeah. like that but also there's some things you don't need to play with yeah 100%. um and so yeah it's yeah a, yeah i would never do anything like outright like you yeah. shouldn't be playing with ouija boards you shouldn't be playing like but that stuff's not just a cutesy game like it's you demonic. know what i mean that's demonic yeah. and um but like there are like it's almost impossible to not Witchcraft has been embraced in our culture, though. Yeah, yeah. Through, and I'm not even going to say that. There's through. I'll just. I'm not even going to name stuff, but through like movies, kid movies, and movies Man. and things. There's. Absolutely. I mean, and even in stuff as innocent as like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, mm -hmm. there's a lot of witch stuff in it. And yeah, like, magic. Which, I, yeah, I let my kids when they were younger watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I didn't ban it because of that, but I didn't let them watch those episodes. So they knew, hey, we don't watch any of the episodes with the witch. Well, and also if you Just, think about like magic, like which is kind of a, it's a Disney thing. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a harmless, uh, like neutral force. <laughs> but if you think about it, it's some kind of power that exists uh, out, apart from God. Yeah. God is not the source of the power when they're using magic. Right. So ultimately, I mean, it seems benign and you just, like, you're always talking about a magical kingdom and yeah. a dragon and a prince and a princess, but uh, if you really break it down, that is giving. There is a there is a source of power that is not coming from God. Yeah. So where is it coming? And, from? and some of those just warrant a conversation with your kids, yeah. or yeah. you know. But some of them weren't a hard line, in my opinion. Right, I agree. And to what you were saying, Josh, the thing I just kept thinking as you were saying what you're saying was it's also an opportunity to be set apart, I mean, yeah. to be holy, which is what we're called to do as as Christ followers. And so when you think of, and what, like, what does that mean, Stephen? Well, it's an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? No, I appreciate that, but we're actually, we're not going to do that. Or we're not going to, we, you know, we're not going to buy that because we don't really, um, we want, we just, that has a secondary meaning and we really, we love, you know, it's an opportunity to, to, it's going to put you in positions where you have to explain yourself maybe. Yeah. 
And that is a great opportunity just to be a little different. Well, and to you be should set apart. You should be intentional with all your relationships and with all you're doing. So if you are intentional in your representation of Christ, yes, you can take some. That's absolutely. I love that. And so just as you're being intentional about the things, not letting bad things represent you to the world, um, also being incredibly intentional about the things you do show to other people. Right. And, um, and like and, your and Jesus and jujitsu shirt, that's right. <laughs> your Jesus and jujitsu hat, one day your rash guard. Yep. <laughs> and that spreads across and also how you interact with people yeah. and everything. It's a, it's a whole I got a gamut of things. So in my house, my brother built me this cross, um, and he's building one for JP. I'm picking it up tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Um, but it's a five foot by three foot, essentially, cross. Uh, and it is just such, it's awesome because it, for me, it's in a prominent place in my house where you literally can't enter like the main part of the house without seeing it. <laughs> So you have to deal with it one way or another. So when people come over, whatever their background, whatever their belief system, whatever, it's a guy coming to, you know, spray my house for pests or whatever, pest control. Like he has to encounter that. And it's like for me and my house, choose now, choose this day who you, whom you will serve, but it's for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that's a symbol that represents Jesus' sacrifice, him, him redeeming us him dying on the cross for our sins and, and being raised again and then us having eternal life because of our belief in him. Uh, all It represents all of that. And I love that when you come into my home and my kids see it too, you can't not deal with it. It's in the main hallway. They see it all the time. They touch it all the time. It's just a important piece of our home. And that came from when I was a kid, my dad had this cross, uh, maybe like a two and a half foot tall cross that hung on the wall that had a crown of thorns, like a real crown of thorns made out of thorns from wherever, you know, where this took place in the Bible, um, wherever they got those thorns from. And it is gnarly. And you, every time I see it, it's like, it causes you to deal with what Jesus, the pain that Jesus would have endured being, you know, crucified and having that crown of thorns on his head and his hands and feet being pierced. And so it was just uh, growing up without in my home, it just kept me. And when people came over, you know, people to set up the internet or install the refrigerator, or whatever it was, you know, it was like it's there on the wall. People see it, they know what we're about. And um, that encouraged me to now do that in my home. That's awesome. That reminds me, like, like as you said, like, hey, it's undeniable. You come into my house, you're going you're gonna to see that cross. Yeah. And, um, it reminds me of uh, a verse, Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 through 9. And Matt Russell was telling me about it. And it's like, this is what people would literally write and put on their doorsteps. And, in front. and so we have this, I have this printed off mm -hmm. and I put it at the gate of our house. So if you're coming on our property, it's there. Like, and, you know, and so I'm going to also get a, um, a, it uh, laminated and put on onto the cross that your brother's bringing me like on, on just on the back side of the cross. But it says, listen, O Israel, the, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord, your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your foreheads as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And it just, I mean, mm, beautiful. yeah, the next few chapters Six of Deuteronomy, nine. I have like just so many things underlined but I anyways that. it was really yeah. good yeah Solid. i like that so. <clears throat> i didn't since we're just throwing scriptures out i didn't find the exact i feel like there's another one that was probably would have summed up what i was trying to say better but i did find this one and it still applies obviously <clears throat> and it actually ties off of kind of what jp read too but colossians three seventeen. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Nice. That's good. I like that. Yeah, it's it's just be mindful and intentional of what you're representing. Because you are representing something. I mean, like today, I intentionally wanted to wear my Origin shirt because I wanted to <laughs> represent Origin on the podcast in yeah. an American-made product. Yes. Right? And so it's like, and we do that. We choose that. All you guys that have purchased uh, Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu gear, you want to represent what Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu is about. So 
whether you it's conscious or subconscious, you're choosing what you're going to represent. And so what I'm saying is be real. And what we're all saying, Josh, it's Josh's word, intentional, be intentional about what you're representing. Just take an inventory of different signs and symbols and things on clothing and in your home and, and put that, put that good stuff out there. I love it, man. There's a, it used to not matter to me that much when I was younger about like, uh, you know, buying a brand of a t-shirt that I, that I want to represent, you know, but as I got older, start, those affiliations, those representations start to matter a lot more to you because you're like, Oh no, I actually want, they stand for something, you know? So re- whether, you know, that's, it's cool because there is a parallel to jujitsu, like just as the pride that comes from the pride you feel when you represent your yes. school, your coach, yeah. your teammates. And, um, it, it's, there's a parallel to representing the kingdom of God. I want to represent God well. Well, I want to be a great representative wherever I go. And, um, it's good. yeah, and I want it to be undeniable. And that's the thing, like, I become a lot more intentional about my belief. Not like I'm preaching to every single person I meet, but I make it known by, like, what we wear, the conversations How that you, you have interact with people. With people. Yeah, the stickers on your truck, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, people know um, it comes no up. stickers, bro. I don't want people tracking me. Well, it comes up. It comes <laughs> up in conversation. I, I don't want to have about. a slip, and <laughs> people know what you're about. I got. A I Jesus. got a video of this Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu truck driving down the road, waving a tomahawk out his driver's window. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll he keep you honest. Paint right? on his face, yeah, his shirt say, off. I was yeah. say, it'll keep you honest, so you don't do. Yeah. Stuff don't like be that. afraid of the weight of that. Yeah. Reputation. With my, bro, that's that's solid. With my brain trauma brain, I'll just forget. <laughs> well, I think it's. Uh, I think representing <laughs> right. people, representing God well to everybody yes. that you meet is yes. like, I just hey, want to make and his hey, name. I've got yeah. something too. There is not, look, as Christ followers and representing and holding the weight of that representation, it's not about living a perfect life, Mm-mm. but it's about when we mess up going, Hey dude, I am so sorry. Yeah. I failed and I need forgiveness. I need to repent. It's having that humility, walking in the humility of Christ. I love John Bevere said when he was coming up, he was, I read this one of his books, he was being trained by a very prominent, very successful pastor, being mentored by this guy. And he he told John, he said, I don't hire perfect pastors. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's interesting. He goes, I only hire men that have walked through adversity or made mistakes, and I've gotten to see how they they handle the adversity and the mistakes they've walked through and made. Yeah. And then when I see... Because guess what? They're all making mistakes. That's right. <laughs> He's like, and when I see the fruit of that... So part of what I'm saying is, as a believer, now, I'm not saying that free license to sin, but I'm saying, no. don't be scared to make a mistake, but then you just got to make it. it right. Yeah. yeah. You got to own just it. Just show God in the way that you, uh, that you make it right. That's right. So here's another scripture for you. Ephesians 4, verse uh, 1, and, 1 through 3. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So, walk in a manner worthy. That is a that is a big calling. Yeah, but that includes that doesn't mean being perfect. Like you know you how said. often I'm walking not worthy. Yeah, a lot. Yes, but we but but. As we're sanctified. Correct. We, we, we Correct. Walked. That's something I heard too. Is so good. Um, last night, my wife and I were watching a video and um, a, te- a teacher of the word talking about how when we come under the blood of Jesus, we invite him into our life. We are, you're actually worthy. You're not deserving of curses and you're actually worthy of his blessing because you have, you wear his righteousness. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's a cool that's a cool thing to to remind yourself. You're a daughter and a son of the King of Kings. And what do what are daughters and sons of kings? They're princesses and princes and they have a lot of perks. Doesn't mean yeah. they might not have hardship, but you're walking in that blessing. Well, we know that our blessing, our ultimate blessing is not this side of heaven anyway. Amen. Yeah. So but that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy his peace and his I mean even in the midst of the hardest times in life, we have the, it is such a blessing that we get to walk with God. He'll yeah. never leave us or forsake us. That's his promise. Not that life's going to work out great or whatever. Sometimes it does. That's right. Sometimes we get those blessings this side of heaven, but then the ultimate blessing is that even in the hard times, he's never going to leave us. So good. It's reminded yeah. me of two episodes ago. Yeah. The, 
And so, Josh, I think that dichotomy is you're spot on with it because it's this attitude of I'm not worthy, mm-hmm. but I am worthy. Right, Jesus <laughs> through yeah. Jesus righteousness, not by anything we, I've, yes, I'm doing that or we have not received. Doing. We've right. received His righteousness because of His free gift that we chose to accept, and That's now we get to wear that balance. righteousness because it's I'm not worthy. But I am worthy. That's a good. Which should encourage you to represent accordingly. And walk in a manner worthy. You know, and yeah. I, I think I hmm. always, hmm. I always have this picture in my head because it's like, we are, you know, why is why is God? Why is He called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Well, because when we come under Him, we're a king, and a lord, under His lordship and under His kingdom. Now we're also slaves. <laughs> yes, right, <laughs> right. We're Dude. slaves of Christ. So there's this dichotomy of we are. Slaves, because we were bought with a price. That's dude. But he's people, a good master. And if you look at if you look at like the problem, th- so you can do this with any issue in the body of Christ. You can see they are on the fringes of the outside of the spectrum of all of these things, and that that's the answer. Always kind of seems to be somewhere in the middle, where we're unifying in the middle. If you look at people that it's like, oh, I'm lower than dirt. I'm a worm, you know, and they just groveling before God. And it's like, I'm unworthy. I'm wor- unworthy. That's like a perversion of, or it's like a manipulation of, yes, our fleshly state we are, but then we pair that with our, us being worthy because of Jesus, That's because right. we're now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The other side is like, oh, touch not God's anointed. Like I'm, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I cannot, you know. It's, Roll it's, out the carpet. I'm walking in the for room. For real, man. It's the far end on the There's other this, side too. The picture I always have is that I when that's, I'm having that's icky, man. I know, like, right? When I'm having time with the Lord, <laughs> the picture I have, and I've stolen this from verbiage I've heard and worship songs and my church sings and stuff. But the vision I have is it's like because I know I am a king in the kingdom. My name literally means crowned one. Stephen is crowned one. King to the king of kings. Yes. Well, this is the picture I always have I when I'm saying. when I'm praying and I'm worshiping. It's like I'm bowing at the Lord's feet to where my crown fell off. If you're bowed, you can't wear a crown. It's going to come off your head. Mm. And that's my that's my view of submission. And I know, I also have this knowing that I was bought with a price when I accepted Christ as my savior. I was bought with the blood of Jesus. And so that means I'm a servant. I'm a slave to Christ and that's biblical. But here's the thing. He's a good master. And when you're a slave to Christ, you're actually a king. (laughs) So it's this funny, it's like you're saying, it's this funny dichotomy, but the, my view is because I try, you can't, if you view yourself too lowly, you'll never accomplish anything. Cause so that's this, it's this dichotomy. And so that's where I'm like, I have a view of myself where I'm bowed to the Lord and my crown's fallen off. And that's that submission factor. And I don't know, it's just helped me as I try to build my identity in Christ because we are conquerors. We are called to build the kingdom, but it looks a little different than what the world shows us. Mm. And so, I don't know, I think it's cool. I absolutely love it because you're spot on. We're not worthy at all. I'm not even worthy to be able to speak to Jesus and pray. Yeah, or tie his sandals. But he gave us that, that opportunity through his righteousness that he bestowed on us. And so it's a, it's a, it's a great so walk thing. In so walking in worthy. It's kind of a weird dichotomy, yep. but <laughs> it's, a, but it's, it's it. the, I mean, you'd agree, right? That's the yeah. reality of our dichotomy. I'm yeah. making a new sticker, walking in a manner worthy. We're going to do that. Okay. Ephesians 4. I like it. I think they'll sell. Let's go. That'd be smart. Yeah. Cool. Isaac, I think you should pray this one out, bro. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day for um, bringing us together for allowing us to to meet and uh, to study your word to to uh, to be built up and edified by your word and we just thank you for this truth today we thank you for uh, the scripture that was read and all the scripture that was read God because we know that it is God breathed and it is profitable for teaching and correcting and rebuking God and we know um, that every person that hears your word today whether wherever they are and whatever time they listen to this podcast, whether it be this week or years from now, God, that it will be, um, it will be important and it will be uh, pertinent because your word is everlasting. And so uh, we put our hope and our trust in you because you're the only one that satisfies and the only one that never fails us. And uh, we just thank you for everyone that listens all over the world. Bless every listener uh, with more of your presence, with a deeper understanding of who you are through your word. 
uh, bless their health and their and their families and their businesses. Uh, we, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. We love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This has been Jesus and Jiu-Jitsu Podcast, episode 057. Go train.